Dita has asked me to say something about the sea level in the world. Now you will be depressed. I was asking her, probably because I'm a specialist in this field and has numerous publications on this, and I am in the hot debate, in the international debate. On this matter, however, I will probably disappoint you. Sorry for that. May I call? Because I will show that there is that there really is no alarming sea level threat, neither in the Baltic nor globally. And I will talk about the Baltic. The Baltic changes in sea level. It's a very complicated thing. There's many, many parameters you need. The uplift, that's called isostasy. The ocean level changes, that's called eustasy. Air pressure, which can be up to one meter, but it's, it's, it's annual, it's uh, daily, weekly, or so. Precipitation, if people don't think it matters at all, I will give you an example by precipitation and run off. Run off, it means how fast you will press Precipitation, out. precipitation, precipitation. I said, near the body. Near the body, ring. So they have, if you the the ship, run off. Climate, local tectonics, this is important. So, just this is the cone of uplift, and around it, it's subsidence. See, it's land is going down. Local. So, Earthquake. in this area, of course, sea will rise a little. <coughs> Only in the very south of the Baltic uh, is there subsidence with sea level rise, flooding. Okay. This is the only thing. If ocean level would, would, I don't say is, rise, uh, even other areas may become flooded. Boom, boom, for example. Uh, I will, before going into this, I wanted to say something which makes the Baltic very different to other areas. We had periods, this is to one, uh, today, 1,000, 2,000, 3,000. So here is the Viking period. This is the chain from Bronze Age to Iron Age. We had very, very instantaneous fall in sea level. Those falls in sea level are exceptionally well take, taken here because we have so many details here. So we really know that it fell by this amount. It's not exaggeration, rather the opposite. The thing is, normally when sea is falling, we say, ah, it became cold, ice expanded, and sea fell. But here it's a complete opposite. Complete opposite. Because in box, box that is peat torn, you have periods where the peat, the sphagnum is peat mossa, where the sphagnum peat, it lives only by rain, rain, uh, precipitation. So, if it gets warm and dry, the white moss becomes very sad and dies. And we, on the contrary, in the summer months at least, we get very happy. <laughs> and we have periods here, short periods, about more than 10 years for sure, more than 20 years, less than 100 years. So it's about 50 years periods where the peat bogs all over Northern Europe died. So it was extremely warm and extremely dry. <laughs> and uh, uh, you can understand this. If my hand here is the outlet of the Baltic at Öresund and Great Belt, it has no time the water to go out there. So the water level is really tilted. If it's raining very much, it goes up. If it's raining very little, it goes down. That's exactly, this is the opposite. It was dry. So here, here in the middle, in the middle, it went down that much. If you go to the south, making it, and score it, it may be so too, but less. So that is just to say that you play tricks. Now we come to something different. This is, rate of sea level changes in millimeters per year. This is rate of amplitude in meters per century, meter per hour. Okay? You very frequently hear now that we will become flooded okay? in the ne next few years, global warming. So uh, this is very simple 
mathematics and physics. It's physics. After the last ice age, when there was an enormous amount of ice, and ice melted away with a tremendous force. Remember here in Stockholm, it passed Stockholm with about the ice margin by about 300 meters recession per year. That's a fantastic melting. Still, sea level globally didn't rise more than 10 millimeter per year. That means one meter per century. This rise for me is the absolute, absolutely, absolutely, absolutely ultimate value we even can talk about. Nothing today can make sea level change more than a meter in the center or 10 millimeters. All the other things, all these figures you hear about one and a half, two, three meters in the center, it's simply disinformation, it's nonsense, it's unrealistic, it's not physics. It's not physics. You don't understand what you're talking about. And we are here. My personal work is down here. <laughs> this is uh, this is a selected time gauge. Selected. You are selected the one you want. And those are values of satellite altimetry. But the satellite altimetry has been corrected by personal correction in order to get this high up. But they don't tell that they have done it. So there is a lot of problems. But for sure we cannot be here. So if we go back here, now we will look at the Baltic. And this is the picture we can forget about what I talked about. Because we have, for 8,000 years, the uplift and subsidence, this line has been stable in Great Belt area. So that's a very, very good zero, tectonically. And here it's subsidence. We have Amsterdam, we have a fantastic record from 1682. And now I wish I for Cox Hafen, because it's a very good modern record. Um, so in uh, Amsterdam, we could convert that figure with, with different thing to a global, to, to a northwestern, the oceanic effect. So from 18 here, 1830, 1840, up to 1930, sea rose by 10 centimeters, 10 centimeters. So about one, the real figure is 1.1 millimeter per year. And stable, for rising, and stable here. Now we go to Coxham, because we have, it goes up to the present. If we apply this correction of the previous one, we get the red line, which is the subsidence of the area, which fits very well, and the white curve, which a German scientist, which have done that, it's some sort of sinusoidal plot to the tide gate, but you can see it's doing exactly as the Amsterdam curve up here, then it's flattening out, becoming parallel, not rising, but being parallel to it, and down here it's even slowing down. It's not rising, maybe even falling. And if we go to Corsair, we can see here maybe in, Italy, in this period, certainly not the rise, here may be something, and in the last part, no rise. So we really don't have a rise in sea. Back to this, this Baltic, we have this area which will be flooded by about, in the south, one 10 centimeters. Up here, zero. And then we have the other part, which I show here. So if there is zero change in sea level, this, the outer one will we rise to zero in the north, 10 centimeter here. And it will go up, sea level will go down, 10 centimeter, and zero, 20 centimeter, or oh, it should be plus, I'm sorry. Plus, our edge of the sea is falling. Uh, and um, then if sea level, would go up by 10 centimeters in the next 100 years. This could maybe to 20 in the south, maybe 10 here, and zero there. If it goes 20 centimeters, which I think is the maximum, we get at the maximum at the very south 30 centimeters, uh, and then we get 20 centimeters, and we get uh, the 10 centimeters here, and zero there. So it's not a big effect uh, when there's no flooding and there's no danger for for a nuclear power plant, according to them. 
Tori. För det första tar det en kolossal tid. Och det var det jag försökte säga med exemplet med sista istiden. För att då låg iskakorna i söder. Vi hade vad heter iskakan i Sverige ner till Hamburg. Vi hade iskakan i, i, i eh, Amerika ner till New York. Så de låg mid latitude. Och när de smälte så smälte de på grund av temperaturen i luften, temperaturen i vattnet och temperaturen underifrån. Alltså den geotermiska värmen. De fick isen att smälta max, max, maximalt. Och då tog det ungefär 10 000 år. Och då blev medelhastigheten för det här var eh, en meter per hundra år. Om du ska ge det på att smälta Grönland och Antarktis så kommer det att ta en enorm omgivning. En, och, och vad heter det? Medelhastigheten kommer bli mycket, mycket lägre än en meter per hundra år. Nej, det behövs bara en Det är en annan Yes, Uh, which are flooded, and uh, of course we have 
uh, peak in the middle of, 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 of uh, the North Sea, huge peak about 9,000 years old, but of course that's because sea level was so low at 9,500 years, and it passed that area. It has nothing to do with, with any, any strange rates. Still, we have 10, less than 10 uh, um, millimeter per year rise. Uh, there are two reports of cities, uh, one in, in the, oh, at very great depth, and that is in, in um, Japan, but that is really a fractured bedrock. It is not a city. And then there is a questionable one outside um, uh, in the Urub outside India. But of course, there are, again, this is that a city or not. But that's a very interesting target. But I have been myself working a lot in the Maldives, and we don't we we don't see any recent thing. On the contrary, we have been diving to great depths and so on. So um, I think everything there is is very normal. Then you have the uh, that was number two. The other was the expansion of the oceans. And uh, I'm sorry, I have the very nice pictures of this because okay, we have to finish. Yeah, because we know exactly the weight. The interesting thing is that sea cannot never be heated up more in the surface. The whole column, which is 6,000 meter deep, it will never heat up that. We know that because the water at 60,000, it's a it's couple of thousand years old from dating. So the last three, 300, the uppermost 300 meters, if that is heated up two degrees, which is very much, it will expand one. Uh, 10 centimeters. <laughs> As you come closer to the coast, there is less and less water. So if you, of course, if it's 10 centimeters, this right, this expansion of two degrees will be only three and a half millimeters. And if you go to the shore, there is no, there is, of course, there is no water to expand. So you're at the shore. No, 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 no. So this is the dynamic of the earth. earth. If you see it. Everybody which has worked in the sea knows that there are dynamic sea surface maps and they show relief of the sea surface up to many meters. In the Gulf Stream, the forcing of the Gulf Stream is high meter above the gravity potentials. The gravity potential surface itself has a buckling. So if you put yourself in the water, in the in a boat from the New Guinea and goes to the Maldives, during that trip along the equator, you come 180 meters closer to the center of the Earth. So many, many of those factors we do have to uh, include, <laughs> and um, I'm doing it. For the uh, lar larger part, for example, you saw the Cook Sound, which is really very nice. It's not at all rising. If you go to the, what is it, Newport, or what is it, in southern England, it's the same thing. There are a few gauges which are rising. Most of the gauges are um, young. But if you take the 159 gauges we have, so and plot all together, the rise is 0.4 or 0.6, depending upon how you do the arithmetics. And also, a tide gauge is usually placed on the harbor construction of concrete. So they uh, very frequently over overestimate the loading effect. So I mean, we cannot. But we have. Does does these United Nations report say that 30 years ago we had perhaps one and a half millimeter sea rising per year, and now it's three and a half millimeters per year? I think those are the numbers we are fed with. All you say they are wrong. It's only half a millimeter. Is that so? Yeah, I'm saying and so. What, why? How can they, how can they say it's selected? That's what I said. That's why I said it's selected data. They select the data that which fits the model. And they interesting, even those you say IPCC, they had a first from the year, year 1900 up to 19, I don't remember, 1950, 1960, they had about 1.7. And then after that, it decreased to 1.1. So it's it's a lot of problems. So that's the only. But here I took whatever was going on globally. We could face it locally here because I took the example of Amsterdam, Coxhaven, and Cochin, which are the keys 
to understanding, to understanding the Baltic. And then I transferred it into the Baltic and showed those. Thank you so much. Applause.